everybody, welcome back. I'm Count Christo, and today we're going to talk about the wonderful game that is Aurora 4X. This, uh, you will note that the date is forwards, don't worry. I'm not going to give you any spoilers for the ongoing series that I have going. I want to talk to you today about ship design. Some people have put out some pretty good and long and comprehensive, and there's both in text and in video, talking about videos and, and guides, talking about how you design a ship. <clears throat> I'm not trying to match that. I'm not trying to tell you how exactly you should design your ships or anything like that. I want to go one step back uh, and one step down in terms of complexity. I want to tell you conceptually how do you design a ship in Aurora 4X. So, here's my photo program, which we're going to use to design our ship. So, um, what I want to talk to you about is the different things that need to go in your ship and how you think about what a ship needs, and how you define a ship class, and that kind of thing. Hopefully this is going to be helpful. I'm going to upload it separately to the main series, um, and we're going to be applying some of these principles in the series. I did this on stream uh, as part of the series in one of the episodes, but I did it kind of quite roughly, and I want to go a little bit more detail than that. So, here we have our ship. And this is going to be truly beautiful art i will hear no no comments on the quality of the art so let's say this is our cruiser that means we have thirty thousand size to play with because that's the size that we've decided relatively arbitrarily what size our ship's going to be so step one tends to be you know, you've got a size you're trying to work towards thirty thousand. you can think of this as a budget we have thirty thousand size to spend and the bigger we make the components usually the more effective they're going to be now let's say we want this ship to be able to do most things we want it to be able to operate for a certain amount so yeah let me no, let me take a step back the first thing you need to do when you're designing a ship is decide what you want it to do for how long at what range those are the main things you need to decide first uh, and, and that if it needs to operate independently or if it will have tenders so will it have a tanker that goes with it obviously that means you can have less fuel tanks and it will have much more range once that as long as those tankers are around it and alive um would you want it to have uh, three different types of weapon systems or just one that kind of thing you need to decide now there's some things that every ship will have this is not to scale a certain amount of the ship will be dedicated to command so this is where you'll have your bridge this is where you'll have your main engineering and all those kind of things. And you decide which of those are worth having. What those command systems do is they increase the number of officers that can hold certain positions on the ship. So if you have a main engineering, you can have a chief engineer, I believe it is. And you can look these up. We're, again, we're doing the conceptual stuff. So that's the command area. You want to have, you know, engineering, all that kind of thing in your command area. And that will take up a certain amount of space. You have some choice over how much space they'll take up because you can choose to have just a bridge or a bridge and a flag bridge and an engineering and a primary flight control and, you know, a command, uh, combat information center. You know, it's up to you uh, how big you make this to a certain extent, but the individual components don't need to change. Then something else that every ship will have, more or less, is an engine. So let's put that over here. This is the engine. It's, an, it's a weird E. There's our engines, right? So our engines are obviously providing our thrust. Now, there are various rules of thumb about how big your engine should be. That's outside of the scope of this video. Typically, they end up being like a third or something like that. More than that sometimes, quite a lot more than that sometimes. But we're just gonna talk about what the different things are you need so you know what you need to think about when you're designing your ship. So you've got the engine. Then of course the engine needs fuel. And that's a very odd F. <laughs> fuel. And how much fuel you have will depend on how far you need it to go. And obviously, the more powerful uh, your engine, the more fuel it will consume uh, over the same distance, meaning you'll need to have more fuel. So yeah, at this point, decide whether how far you want it to be able to get. And is it going to get there solo? Or is it going to get there with the assistance of tankers? Very important to work that out before you determine how much fuel you put on the ship. Then next, you have your we're going to divide uh, offensive and defensive capabilities. Some of the things in these two will be duplicated. So for the cruisers that I'm going to build in the campaign, we're going to use missiles offensively and gorse cannons defensively. You can use 
ghost cannons offensively. You can use missiles defensively. You can use lasers. You can use all kinds of different things. But that's what we're going to go with. So that's what I'm going to address here. There will be differences, slight differences, if you're doing something different. So let's talk about our missiles. What do you need to be able to launch a missile? Well, step one, you need a missile launcher. Here's our, actually, let's not use that because missile launchers are not gimbaled. Here's our missile tube, right? It's got a little, it's got its missile in it. And it's ready to shoot it out into the sky, launching it out into enemy space. And then the missile will fly itself. Now, the important thing about missiles, one of the important things about missiles, they have onboard engines. So they are not, uh, they're not, you don't have to aim them, right? That means you don't need a gimbaled turret in order to uh, to point it exactly in the right place because he's just going to launch out and then rocket off towards their intended target. So you need a, a missile launcher, right? This is the missile launcher. And the missile launcher, you need to decide how big is it, which determines how large a missile it can fire. Uh, you need to decide how fast it can reload. Those are the two main things on the missile launcher. So next, you need some missiles. You need a magazine inside here. And this, is, of course, is going to have you know all your, all your little missiles. And your tech will determine how much of your magazine space is taken up by the missile loading system. All the mechanics that will move the missiles from the magazine into the missile launchers will take up a certain amount of this space. Base tech, I think, is 70%. You can get it down to very, very low. The other technology that's important for missile mag for, for magazines is the um, chance of them blowing up if they're hit. So if this is hit by anything um, directly, there's a certain chance that all of the missiles inside will just detonate and your ship is gone at that point, almost. I believe, I'm not certain if it's almost certainly or certainly, but it's essentially a moot point. If the magazine explodes, the ship is dead. So this is something that you obviously want to protect. And it's something that um, you need to have this system in place that tries to neutralize the ordnance so that it doesn't all blow up. Mm. <clears throat> so there's the magazine. Uh, then you need the, the systems that are going to actually uh, help you fire the missile. So let's actually put those up here. You need some sensors or your ship is not going to be able to do much because it can't see the enemy. Now it's worth noting, technically not every ship needs a sensor. What you need to have in order to fire these missiles is a missile fire control, MCF. So the missile fire control <clears throat> knows about some target because some sensor in the fleet, not on the ship, in the fleet, some sensor has told the missile fire control, there's a ship here, right? And so then the missile gets fired and the missile fire control guides it to its target. That's what the missile fire control does. But in order to see the missile, uh, in order to see the target, that is to say, you need a uh, a sensor. So this is our sens, our sensors. And sensors come in two basic types. <clears throat> well, this is an active sensor, actually. And there are other types, but we're not going to use them yet in our campaign, so I'm not going to worry about them. Active sensors, uh, there are two main types. There's a missile sensor. And there's a ship sensor. Now, the reason you have two different types rather than just one big sensor that detects everything is that sensors have a particular resolution. That is to say, <clears throat> they're looking for things of a certain size or larger. So your missile sensor is looking for things that are very, very, very small. And hence, it will have a dramatically smaller range. Because to be able to detect something much smaller, you're going to have to look much harder, basically. So the same size missile sensor is going to be able to see less far. And your ship sensor is looking for stuff that's dramatically bigger. Like the, sh the missile sensor is looking for something that might be five tons, okay? And the ship sensor might be looking for something that's wildly bigger than that, like 5,000 tons. So you can have a much, much longer range ship sensor. In order for your missile fire control to fire upon the enemy, your ship sensor of any ship in the fleet has to be able to see the target. If at any point your ship sensor loses line of sight on the target, then your missile will just stop dead in the air. It will essentially just drift. It's gone. It's not going to hit anything um, and it's going to be useless, right? So it's very important that your ship sensor somewhere in the fleet can detect the enemy ship as you're attempting to fire upon it. 
bear in mind that electronic warfare, again, something a bit more complicated we're not going to touch on today, is relevant here and can reduce the range of your ship sensors. So how do you make your ship sensors and your missile sensors? The best thing is to know the kind of target you're shooting at. How far away is it going to be? How large is it? Both in terms of missiles and ships. And to do that, you need to be able to scout. You need to be able to see the enemy ship, right? That's not always an option. So sometimes you just have to pick like, OK, we're going to be able to see ships of 5000 tons at 100 million kilometers, right? That's probably what I'm going to design for our first ship in the series. Uh, and then we're going to be able to shoot things 100 million kilometers away unless they have any electronic countermeasures, in which case we might have to get to 80 million kilometers away before we can actually shoot them, which does make a big difference. <clears throat> So your missiles are one of the other things you have to design. You've got your missile launcher, but what about the actual missiles? The missiles will have a few different things about them that you need to design. And it's important that, again, ideally you try and tailor this to what you're trying to shoot with them. But otherwise, you know, sometimes you don't have that intel, you're just trying to make them as good as you can. They, you de need to dedicate a certain, just like you're designing the ship, you have to dedicate a certain amount of the missile to different things. A certain amount of it will be engine, a certain amount of it will be fuel, a certain amount of it will be things to enable it to be more agile. A more agile missile has a higher chance to hit the target compared to a less agile missile at the same speed. Uh, you need to dedicate a certain amount to the actual warhead, the thing that goes boom, right? Let's say you have a five size missile, you might dedicate one point, one missile size point of that five to, um, to actually you know, hitting stuff. Uh, to blowing stuff up once you hit it, that is to say. And your tech level will determine how much damage that means you will do. So remember, you have to design the missiles as well. So we have our sensors. So you've got your sensors. You've got your missile fire control. I think that's all for missiles. You've got the launcher, the missile, the missile fire control, the magazine, and the ship sensor, because that's what we're going to be firing our missiles at. Next, you have your gorse cannon. Now, the gorse cannon is... The Gorse Cannon is what we're going to use to fire upon enemy incoming missiles. Now, like I've said, there are various different weapons you can use. It's usually safe to assume that the main enemy, if you're using missiles to shoot at the enemy, the idea usually is you stay out of range of all non-missile weapons. Because missiles are dramatically longer range, just staggeringly so. So, for example, at the same tech level that we're at at the moment, we can make a missile that can go 150 million kilometers. Meanwhile, our Gorse Cannons can go 50,000 kilometers. So missiles are just staggeringly, staggeringly longer range. So this right here is our Gorse Cannon. Now the Gorse Cannon has two main components. First, you've got this. This is the turret. And then we've got this. This is the actual cannon. Cannon. And if I'm spelling stuff wrong here, you know, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. I can't spell. I saved my life. Now, Gorse Cannons are going to be shooting at incoming enemy missiles. Missiles go a fast, fast speed, really fast. And it's very, therefore, it can become very hard to shoot them. Uh, that's because missiles tend to have a lot of their mass dedicated to engine. So that they can go super fast, be super hard to shoot down, and be very good at slamming into your ship before you can react. Now, that's why we're going to turret our Gorse Cannons. The turreting is actually optional. You can make ghost cannons that are not turreted. Um, that's usually only a good idea if you're putting them on very small, very agile ships, because there's a concept called tracking. So let's say our ghost cannon is trying to shoot a target that has a speed of 5,000. That's 5,000 kilometers per second. Maybe our ghost cannon has a tracking of exactly 5,000, in which case that's fine. There's no effect on hit chance. The base hit chance is unaffected. But consider the fact that our ghost cannon has, might have a tracking of 2,500. Now it has a 50% uh, modifier, I believe. And again, we're doing, um, we're, we're not doing kind of exact numbers in this video, we're just doing the concepts. But let's say it's about 50% hit chance if you can only track up to 50% of the target speed. But there's multiple ways <clears throat> you need to be able to get that tracking. Number one, you have a, a, Gorse cannons count as lasers in terms of fire control. So we have a laser fire control. Now the laser fire control has a range and it has a tracking speed. The laser, uh, I'm actually, I'm gonna check which tracking speed counts, hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so yes, I've looked it up. So yes, your fire control, laser fire control here, uh, let's say it has a range of 
um, 10,000. And it's trying to shoot a target at 10,000. It will miss every time. Let's say it's trying to hit a target at zero. It will hit every time. The base, the base chance will be 100% every time. Obviously, there's other factors that go into it. And then it linearly scales between the two. So by increasing our range from 10,000 to 20,000, now a target at 10,000, we have a 50% chance to hit it. Let's say we increase our range to uh, 50,000. Now we have an 80% chance to hit a target at 10,000. So that's how fire control range works. <clears throat> but then there's tracking speed. Let's say we have a tracking speed of 25,000. The target is going 25,000, 100% base chance to hit. Let's say the target is going at 50,000. We have a base tracking of 25,000, 50% base chance to hit. Nice and simple. But how do you get your tracking speed? If you have, there are multiple ways you can determine the tracking speed. Um, for a gorse cannon that's on a turret, the tracking speed is determined by the turret. And there's technology, and you can, you set the desired tracking speed of the turret. If you set it really high, this turret's going to have to be huge because it needs to have all these gears in it, basically, to be able to turn super, super fast. These are beautiful gear drawings. To be able to turn super, super fast in order to be able to track those targets at the speed you've desired, right? But realistically, you can't make these turrets just massive. So you're going to be limited in how fast, in which case the tracking speed comes from the turret's ability to go, you know, ding, ding, and fire at stuff, right? It's important to remember that there is a, a bonus you can get for um, having this line of sight on a missile. So our missile sensor is going to be looking at the missile as it comes in, looking at the missile, looking at the missile, looking at the missile for a certain length of time before you shoot at it, usually, almost always. And there's technologies that mean if you're looking at it for 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, you get a certain bonus to your tracking speed. So let's say we have a tracking speed of 100,000 kilometers a second and the missile's coming in at 200,000. If we've looked at it, and these are, again, these numbers aren't exact, if you looked at it for 120 seconds, you might get a 30% bonus to your tracking speed. So it's as if you have a tracking speed of 130,000 kilometers a second, in which case, of course, you're going to be able to hit it better. That's why your missile sensor wants to be able to see further than you necessarily want to shoot missiles. Often with a gorse cannon, what you're doing is called a final defensive fire. That means that you only fire upon incoming missiles once at point blank range. You're not trying to whittle them down as they cross the 100 million kilometer gap that they're moving towards you. You're just gonna wait until they're right next to you and then you're gonna try and shoot them before they hit you. It's much easier to hit things at shorter ranges, which is why this final defensive fire strategy is often deployed. So let's say we're going with final defensive fire. That means the missile is going to be ex extremely close to us. So we want to give ourselves line of sight on that missile for at least our tracking time as the missile comes in. Our tracking time bonus, rather, as the missile comes in. So let's say the missile goes at uh, 1,000 kilometers per second. And we have a tracking time bonus maximum of 120 seconds. That means we want to be able to have line of sight on the missile for 120 seconds. So with some very simple maths, we know that we need our missile sensor to be able to detect missiles 120,000 kilometers away. That will give us a 120 seconds spent looking at the missile, you know, working out its trajectory, implying that it's going to come in at this angle, which lets us get that tracking speed bonus. So, uh, Ideally, you want to know the enemy missile you're trying to defeat with your turrets. Now that's challenging, not only because sometimes the uh, your alien alien technology advances, for example, and it's worth noting that a 1,000 speed missile is not likely to be what you're fighting. They might be coming in at 16,000 or 32,000. You know, there's really, really fast missiles out there. And you need to try and take that into account when you're designing your missile sensor, because you want to be able to see them coming so you can get ready for that final defensive fire to be able to shoot down as many of the volley of missiles as possible. Now, the other key thing you need to decide around weapons. Have I finished with? Yeah, we got, okay. Laser fire control, missile fire control. Yeah, so this, as you can see, quite simple, this, because there's no missile with a gorse cannon. You don't have to design the projectile and there's no magazine. So it's simpler, just laser fire control, uh, a missile sensor, gorse cannon turret. Jobs are good, in, right? Now, we have our gorse cannons, we have our missiles, we understand the different components, but what are we trying to do with them? We have said that the gorse cannons need, and the turrets need to be designed, and the laser fire control, need to be designed for the kind of missile they're going to defeat. But it's also worth noting, you need to design them for the number of missiles that they're trying to defeat. So let's say we expect a volley 
of enemy missiles coming in to be comprised of 100 missiles. In order to shoot down 100 missiles, you're going to have to shoot at least 100 Gorse Cannon rounds. One Gorse Cannon round can only deal with one missile. Bear in mind that each Gorse Cannon can fire more than one round. So the ones we have, well, well I won't tell you the actual tech level we're at because I wanted this to be no spoilers, but let's say you have uh, two rounds fired per five seconds. Combat happens usually in five second increments. So your Gorse Cannon is going to fire two rounds every five seconds. That means each Gorse Cannon can defeat two missiles. That means if you've got f uh, 100 total missiles coming in, you need 50 Gorse Cannons. That sounds like a hell of a lot, but remember they don't all have to be on the same ship because ships in a fleet act like they are at a point. They can all defend each other with final defensive fire just as effectively as they can defend themselves. So don't worry about the idea that each of your ships need to be able to defeat all of the missiles coming in in case the enemy focus fires one of your ships. Your fleet will defend itself. So let's say we have now uh, a much more reasonable ask of 20 ships with an average of 2.5 Gorse Cannons on each. Right Now we can defeat if they're each firing two rounds. Remember though, that assumes we have a 100% hit rate. That is unlikely. You are not likely to get a 100% hit rate. So you want to overdo it with defenses, usually. Speaking of defenses, there's another key component on here that we have yet to add, and that is the armor. Now, the armor is very important because the armor is simple. The armor is easy. This is our armor. <clears throat> now, the way armor works in Aurora is you apply it completely evenly to the ship. There's no extra thickness around your citadel zones. You don't have extra armor on your magazine. That's important to note. So you have your armor and you have a certain number of layers of armor. This is what you can choose. That's the only thing you can choose when it comes to armor. How many layers do you want? The thickness of those layers in mass is determined by your technology. The better technology you have, the less massive an additional layer of armor becomes. So, uh, and each layer is, ooh, I'm not sure about this actually. I think each layer is linearly larger. I don't think out outer layers, I'm not certain about that. You should check that in your own game. I don't think the second layer is actually more massive than the first layer, which it should be, right? Because it's, you know, going out and bigger, but I think they're linearly sized. But with better tech, you can get more layers for the same mass. That's the advantage of your um, the technology that you get around um, armor. You can have more layers, same mass. So it's effectively like you can make thicker, you know, thicker armor for the same price, which is obviously great. How many layers of armor you put on is entirely up to you. Uh, it just it will just depend how much um, how much incoming fire you expect to get to you. Now bear in mind that the only kind of incoming fire there are also shields. We're not touching on shields because I've never used them. I will at some point. Later, when I've, when I've done like another 100 hours of this series, I'll do like an advanced ship design tutorial. <laughs> but for now, I've never used shields, so I'm not going to use them. So without shields, remember that the only kind of incoming fire you can shoot down is missiles. Lasers, gorse cannons, microwave cannons, uh, all this stuff. Mayons, uh, maisons rather, whatever they're called. All of that stuff will hit your target. <clears throat> Those are effectively hit-scan weaponry. <laughs> they don't move through space, they just hit you. So, that's because they move at light speed. They, basically, there's nothing that you can do to stop them with gorse cannons. So they, for those, you just need to defend yourself with armor. Armor's the only thing you're gonna be able to do with that. You can also do electronic countermeasures, but again, I've never used them. They'll be in my advanced ship design tutorial <laughs> later on. But now armor is important because armor exists in layers. And this is important both for your defense and for your offense. Let's say your enemy is shooting you with missiles. And let's say the enemy missile has a warhead strength of one. That warhead strength is very simple to visualize it will do one point of damage like this let's say our armor is uh, your armor has a certain width as well and that width is broken up like this into sections so let's say this is our armor on our ship okay it's you know a certain our ship has a certain size and that determines its width you visualize the armor of a ship not you know all the way around but just in one plane uh, just a lacrosse. So this is our armor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got a ten size ship, very small, and it's four deep armor. If you get hit, it will destroy with a one strength missile or laser or whatever, it will destroy one block like this. If you get hit by a two strength 
missile, it will destroy like this. If you get hit with a three strength missile, it will destroy like this. If you get hit with a four strength missile, it will get destroyed like this. Now note that a four strength missile will in one hit defeat one layer of armor. So let's say you only had one layer of armor. A four strength missile would immediately, if it hit you, destroy an interior space. Now each, inter each item in your ship has a chance of being that thing that is destroyed. And that chance is calculated based on their size. So let's say your engine makes up 50% of your ship and you get an internal destruction like this. I believe how it works, and again, this is mostly just theoretical, but basically I believe how it works is that you now have a 50% chance that that damage is going to be applied to your engine. That's pretty bad, right? So you can see that two layers of armor, however, is enough to stop a four strength missile, the first four strength missile, because of course the second four strength missile could hit in exactly the same place and destroy these three. It's unlikely to do so, but it could. So that's a four strength missile. How it goes then is five here, and then six here, seven, eight, and then it's nine that penetrates down one additional layer. So one penetrates the first layer, four penetrates the next layer, nine penetrates the next layer, and you can see how this is going to carry on. You've got nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is the next one up, which will penetrate an additional layer. Now, that is missiles, but it's not that simple when it comes to lasers. It's not that simple when it comes to rail guns and particle torpedoes or lasers. So the way lasers work is like this. A laser destroys this one first with one damage, this one second with two damage, this one third with three damage. So a three damage laser is gonna do wildly more damage penetration wise than a three damage uh, missile. Obviously very important. Then it goes four, five, but then six comes down here. That's lasers. And then particle torpedoes go one, two penetration, three, four, five penetration. So basically what this means is that missiles have to spend a lot longer destroying the armor before they can get deep penetrating hits versus um, lasers and, and rail guns and things like that. So that's those. But I need to speed up a bit because I'm running out of time. So we're gonna, that's armor. Now the reason I've just talked about all that stuff with armor when we're trying to do ship design is think about that when you're designing your ship. So if the enemy has a missile penetration, it has a missile strength of four, right? They're going to do this much damage to your armor with each hit. So bear in mind that each two, if you're in the worst case scenario, each two layers of armor defeats one enemy missile because the first one does this. The second one, I'm not actually quite sure how this damage pattern works for the second missile. I think it would go one, two, three, four. I think that's how it would work. And then if another one hit here, it would go one. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure how subsequent hits work. Um, but you need to keep in mind what kind of weapons you're being hit with while you're designing your armor patterns. Next up, just to finish out here, you have uh, some crew quarters. Oops. Some crew quarters. They won't be nearly this big on the ship. That's depending on how long, how long the deployment time you set. The ship will automatically calculate how many crew quarters you need for that, and it will set those up. And that, more or less, is how we're going to design our early ships. There are other things you can put on. Lasers, cannonades... Um, troop transports for boarding actions, um, shields, uh, power plants to power your shields. But that is what we're going to do with our initial ships. I hope that's helpful for getting you to be able to conceptualize what it takes to design a ship. And one of the important things here to remember is that many of these components you have to design individually as components to then put into the ship. Right? I'm just going to highlight those here so you know them uh, when you're going off to try and design your ships. You have to design a missile launcher specifically for the ship. You can use them on multiple ships, but you have to design at least one. The missiles, you have to design specifically. The missile sensor, the ship sensor, you have to design specifically. The gorse cannon, uh, this bit of the gorse cannon, you have to design specifically. The turret, you have to design specifically. And then the gorse cannon whole thing, turret plus cannon, has to be designed as a separate thing. Laser fire control, missile fire control, you've got to design those. The magazine, you've got to design that. The engine, you've got to design that. That's it. 
You have to design all those components, then the other ones are kind of, you know, generic components. You have to put them all in here. You have to decide how much of the ship you dedicate to each. You have to decide the role of the ship, how good the armor is going to be, how far am I going to try and fire the missile? That's going to affect your ship sensor, of course. How far, uh, how long do I want to be able to see the enemy missiles? That's your missile sensor. How much ammunition do I want to be able to carry? How much damage do I want to be able to deal? That's your magazine. How far away am I going to fire my missiles? How fast are the incoming targets? That's your laser fire control. How rapidly do I want to be able to reload my missiles? How often do I want to be able to fire it? What size missile do I want to fire? That's your missile launcher. How fast, agile, damaging, ranged do I want my missile to be? That's your missile. How fast do I want to be able to fly? At what efficiency? That's your engine. How far do I want to be able to fly? That's your fuel. How much damage do I want to be able to take? That's your armor. What kind of officers do I want to have on the ship? That's your command. Sefini, I hope that was helpful. Um, put your questions in the comments. Some of the maths might have been a little bit off. I was just trying to get the basic concepts down. There will be a more advanced version of this tutorial. Good luck in Aurora. The most important thing to remember is design your ship for the task. Don't try and design one engine and then put on everything. Don't try and design uh, one, you know, don't pick one layer of armor and put it on everything. Pick the things that are likely to get hit more. Don't try and design one sensor and put it on everything. Try and make it class specific. Try and make it uh, custom designated and um, remember that losing your first entire fleet because you screwed up and didn't put a missile sensor on it and couldn't even fire anything is very normal <laughs> enjoy aurora i hope that was helpful questions in the comments very well